Hi, I'm Dr. Saki Mansoor and I am speaking from my channel Learning Anatomy and uh, as you know, I have started the descending tracks of the spinal cord and today we we'll discuss very, very important pyramidal tracts or the corticospinal tracts. It's the same uh, names for the tract. So here you identify these tracts. The, this is the lateral corticospinal tract and this is the anterior corticospinal tract. These are the two tracts grouped together as the pyramidal tracts. Then I will tell you immediately why this is called as pyramidal tracts. The reason for that. This is the lateral larger one composed of almost 90% of the fibers and the remaining about 10% are the anterior corticospinal tracts. And the corticobulbar tracts are also included in these as well, which are related on to the uh, non um, uh, uh, non ocular um, uh, cranial nerves, non ocular cranial nerves. So this is, uh, you know, uh, you see this pyramidal uh, tracts, right? This here comes the cerebral cortex, right? I will tell you in detail which areas of the cerebral cortex are involved in the formation of the pyramidal tracts and here are these areas. This is the general layout I'm showing it to you. Then here it passes through the coronal radiator, posterior limb of the internal capsule and here it comes centering the brain stem and uh, the midbrain, the pons and the middle of long eta. and here it produces, uh, pro there is a presence of protuberance, the pyramid or the motor decussation here these fibers decussate 90% of the fibers and form the lateral corticospinal tract and they end on the posterior quadrant of the lateral funiculus of the spinal cord and the 10% of the fibers do not cross and they descend down onto the anterior uh, 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 funiculus of the spinal tract. This is the fit. So the neurohistology, first of all, we'll have to discuss some of the aspects of the neurohistology. Fibers of the corticospinal tract arise as axons of the pyramidal cells situated in the fifth layer of the cerebral cortex, which is also known as the ganglionic layer or the inner pyramidal layer. So here various kinds of uh, the cells are present, four kinds are mentioned over here. There are the big pyramidal cells and smaller stellate cells and cells of Martinotti. These constitute this layer. Its name is derived from the huge pyramidal cells, the bat cells of the motor cortex. And this large bulk of the bat cells contribute to the larger size of the lateral corticospinal tracts. So the origin of the corticospinal tracts, you see these areas, right? You know, this is the central sulcus, right? And uh, in front of the central sulcus, there is an area for the primary motor area. And then in front of that is the primary premotor cortex. This is area six, so four and six. And behind the uh, central sulcus is the parietal lobe and the area 312, which is a primary somatosensory cortex. So approximately one third of the fibers take their origin from primary motor cortex or the area four, primary motor cortex or the area four. So one third of the fibers take their origin from here in front of the central sulcus and one third from the secondary motor cortex, which is the area six, which is the pre-motor cortex, pre-motor cortex, you see it is. So one third arise from the parietal lobe. So which is, this is the 312 area. I told you already 312 primary somatosensory cortex. Thus two thirds of the fibers arise from the pre-central gyrus. This is the pre-central gyrus. So two thirds of the fibers arise from there and one third of the fibers arise from the post-central gyrus. This is the one third of the 
fibers, which is the primary somatosensory cortex, areas three, one, two, and from here arise the, uh, uh, the these fibers, the remaining one third. The pyramidal tracts, descending fibers of the pyramidal tracts converge in corona radiator. I told you already, here is the corona radiator. And after that, these traverse the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Posterior limb of the internal capsule. Pyramidal tract after that passes through the middle three fifths of the basis pedunculi of the midbrain. Basis pedunculi of the midbrain. But that base of the uh, midbrain, you go and go to my lecture on the midbrain already, a uh, popular lecture there at the, my channel, Learning Anatomy, at the YouTube. So you can go back there to uh, revise that. So this is passes through the, this, this is, you know, this is the uh, midbrain, right? This is from, this is passes through the ba base. As the tract enters into the pons, this is the pons, it is split into many bundles by transverse pontocerebellar fibers, right? It is split into many bundles. When in the medulla oblongata, this is the medulla oblongata outline, these five bundles are grouped together along anterior border to produce a bulge called the pyramid. And to see that pyramid, you go back to my viral video of the medulla on the, my channel YouTube, the learning anatomy, and uh, you could see the that protuberance, the pyramid, and uh, this is the, uh, when in the medulla oblongata, these bundles are grouped together along anterior border to produce a bulge called the pyramid. Which of these fibers? The pyramidal tract fibers. So that is why these corticospinal uh, tracts are also called as the pyramidal tract. This is the motor decussation. Pyramidal tracts at the junction of the medulla oblongata and the spinal cord, most of the fibers, I already told you, this is the junction of the medulla oblongata and the spinal cord, this. The 90% cross the midline at the decussation of the pyramids, 90% cross here. And make enters into the posterior quadrant of the lateral white column of the spinal cord, thus forming a lateral corticospinal tract. Here you go. Yes. Exons of the giant cells of the bats put up the large diameter of the fibers to that tract. I told you already. So pyramidal tracts, the rest of the fibers do not cross in that decussation, but come down in the ventral white column of the spinal cord as anterior corticospinal tract. So these are those fibers which crossed and end in the lateral white column. They were the lateral corticospinal tract and these are 90% of the fibers. And the 10% of the fibers did not cross and they come to finish in the ventral corticospinal, ventral uh, spinal um, column and this is the anterior corticospinal tract, right? So the lateral corticospinal tract traverses throughout the length of the spinal cord. It's, this is present in all of the portions of the spinal cord segments. Its fibers end in the ventral gray column of all the spinal cord segments. Majority of the corticospinal fibers synapse with the internal neurons and when these synapse with alpha motor neurons and a few gamma motor neurons. So what are the functions of the pyramidal tracts, right? You see this. These pathways are responsible for the voluntary control of the musculature of the body and face, right? What is that? Voluntary control of the musculature of the body and the face. So what about the, first of all, the lateral corticospinal tract? It is concerned with volitional skill motor activity. That is the, that motor activity that is brought about by our will. So primarily of digits of upper limb, which is a very delicate function performed by digits of the upper limb, right from writing to eating everything. With, with his, you know the definition of the upper limb is a prehensile um, uh, limb, right? Which is uh, used to uh, grip a thing. 
So the lateral corticospinal tract is used to perform volitional skill motor activity, where also agility and speed is required. Anterior corticospinal tract is concerned with control of axial muscles. So anterior corticospinal tract is concerned with control of axial muscles. So the corticospinal tracts are not the sole pathways for serving voluntary movement. Many of the simple basic voluntary movements are mediated by other descending tracts. And uh, that finishing my today's lectures is a very short one. And in the very, uh, in the last, in the next lecture, I will finish with the descending tracts. So thank you very much. Stay tuned and please do like my channel, share it. And uh, also never forget to support my channel by sharing and supporting. I need it. Of course, you're working very hard and you've been throughout with me through, since the COVID onset. Uh, from the, uh, I launched my channel on 28th April and it's grown enormously. I'm thankful to you all for your support. Please continue that. Thank you very much.